Thanks for joining us for the second episode of our Satara adventure. What a beautiful start to the day. Just to recap, this is the area that we will be covering during our game drives whilst we are at Satara this time and on our return from Punda Maria. Mornings in Kruger often start with beautiful sunrises and hyenas lying in the road. I just love the golden grass that you find around Satara at this time of the year. We're on our way to the Sweeney Road, which is the S126, and we plan to stop off at the Muzanzeni picnic site for coffee before making our way to the Velferdint waterhole. We've noticed something that's quite strange here. These two types of hornbills are active at the same nest. Normally southern yellow-billed hornbills and southern red-billed hornbills compete with each other and don't share a nest. These two both seem to be feeding a chick in the same nest. Do let me know if you've come across this behaviour before. Did you know that each giraffe has a unique pattern of spots, much like human fingerprints, which helps with identification in the wild? No good elephant duck ever goes to waste in Kruger. This is the lovely Muzanzenzi picnic site. I'm having tea with a buffalo. <laughs> the latest estimates are that the population of the African wild dog in Kruger is approximately 250 to 350 dogs. These numbers can fluctuate at times for various reasons. The African wild dog is one of the most endangered carnivores in Africa, and the Kruger population represents one of the few remaining strongholds for the species on the continent. So we feel extremely lucky to have come across this lovely pack. Sitting at the Velferdent waterhole is always interesting and you're guaranteed to see plenty of game gathering here. The wildebeest here seem to be rather skittish today. Fighting on their knees allows wildebeest to push and shove against each other while conserving energy. By lowering their bodies and fighting on their knees, wildebeest reduce the likelihood of serious injury or even fatal wounds, which are more likely if they were fighting while fully upright. Young impala males engage in playful sparring by locking horns and pretending to fight. This not only strengthens their muscles and hones their skills, but helps them to learn how to assert dominance, which will be vital when they reach maturity and must compete for mates.
the impala are quite wary of this hyena, but he's just here to cool down for a while. The purring noise made by an elephant is a form of communication known as rumble. Elephants produce these low frequency sounds, which can resemble a purring or a rumbling noise, to convey a variety of messages to other members of their herd. If you look at the bottom of this tree, you'll see that the bark has been eaten away by elephants. If they go right around the tree, unfortunately it'll die. Let's hope that this tree survives, as it's home to lots of birds' nests. Hummercorps are the most feared birds in the African culture, as their presence is seen as an omen of bad luck. While bonding, pairs often perform a false mating ritual. This behaviour is part of the bird's complex social and reproductive life and is linked to its elaborate nest building practices. They don't actually mate and the false mating ritual is often observed near the nest or during its construction. It's a way to reinforce their bond and commitment as they work hard together to build their intricate nest. It's midday and the temperature in our campsite is 44 degrees centigrade. The birds are really feeling the heat. This starling spreads its wings out to regulate its body temperature. It seems rather odd to be lying in the hot sun to do that, doesn't it? But what beautiful wings it has. waiting to see now if we can see some cheetahs on our last afternoon. Last afternoon is Atara. It's Atara, yes, because tomorrow we are heading up to Lataba and we'll be there for three nights. We've had um, four, four nights here and three fabulous days in um, Satara. We've had a wonderful uh, leopard sighting, um, quite a few amazing lion sightings and um, today we were really really lucky to see wild dogs they were amazing weren't they yeah nice big pack oh unreal and a very very close sighting too yeah it came right around the car so yes yeah, so we're very very excited to see what lataba has got to offer it's got a it's got a it's got a uh, it's a hard act to follow sitar is a hard act to follow <laughs> the, the only thing i, I have a disappointment is that I didn't see Casper the white lion here. Um, I was really hoping to see him, but he's quite um, uh, prevalent around this area. Everybody sees him, but we haven't been lucky. Um, we've still got a couple of hours, so I'm not going to write him off yet. But yeah, we're looking forward to what the park has to offer in future. We're back on the H13 and are now taking a quick drive to Kamana Dam. Oh dear, these poor lions are also really feeling the heat. There's a fourth little one at the back. Mm. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe down below. Thank you. The buffalo, as usual, are lolling around in the water to cool down. What a peaceful scene this is.
This beautiful male batelier has his wings spread out to cool himself and to regulate his temperature, just like that starling in our campsite. How lucky is this? My wish to see a cheetah has been granted. This one looks like it's had its tail bitten off at some stage of its life. It must have had a very lucky escape. This must be our day for unusual sightings. Because of the heat wave we are having today, the fish in this river are dying in large numbers because the high temperatures have reduced the water's oxygen levels. Warm water holds less dissolved oxygen than cold water and fish, which need oxygen to survive, can suffocate when it becomes too low. Also, warmer temperatures can increase the fish's metabolism, leading to higher oxygen demands. When the oxygen supply can't be met, the fish may die from hypoxia or low oxygen levels. You can see the fish swimming just below the water surface. The saddle-built stork seems a bit reluctant to eat this fish, almost as if it feels apologetic for having an unfair advantage. This certainly isn't something that one sees every day. As we're heading to Letaba tomorrow, a quick fuel top-up is in order. While Rob does this, I'll show you the swimming pool. After Rob has set up the rooftop tent, we'll enjoy our last evening reminiscing about our fabulous time at Satara. Thanks so much for watching. Do join us on the next leg of our 30-day Kruger adventure as we visit Letaba Camp.